So before we dive into the new features of RightFacts 20.2, let's talk about open text procedures and policies. As part of open text release schedule policies, there will be no new features released until RightFacts 21.2, scheduled for release in April 2021. Open text will release new features for RightFacts once a year, but there will be bug fixes and patches as needed. Okay, on this slide, you can see the RightFacts product lifecycle matrix. The key takeaway here is the dates each version of RightFacts goes into sustaining maintenance. RightFacts 20.2 will not go into sustaining maintenance until April 2025. RightFacts 10.6 and older is currently in sustaining maintenance. Okay, now let's discuss product enhancements in RightFacts 20.2. RightFax 20.2 has added the ability to create a preferred gateway. So now you can control the distribution of large fax loads across multiple gateways and schedule email-based faxes to specific gateways based on the time of day. As you can see from the slide, it's pretty easy to set up and you can define as many preferred gateways as you like. Okay, both the web and desktop client have been upgraded and updated with new features. We will go through most of the new features during the live demo in a few minutes. When creating a new fax, the Create New Fax window has been redesigned so it's simpler and more intuitive. Again, you'll see all this in a few minutes. Also, when adding attachments to the web client, you can now drag and drop files, which makes it much easier and quicker. For customers that have the MS Exchange connector and install the Outlook plugin, the interface has been upgraded to simplify the user experience of sending a fax. The Outlook add-on is full featured and can really emulate everything that you could do either from the web client or the thick client. So customers that have the, the MS Exchange connector can use this to have full unified messaging. So you can send, receive, and even get all your fax statuses directly from Outlook. And again, that requires the Exchange connector. You can talk to your sales rep for information and pricing. Okay, RightFax 20.2 no longer needs the EDC module. All MFP, which is multifunction printer devices, are now controlled directly from the RightFax web admin. This makes it much simpler to control and adding, deleting, and modifying your MFPs. So a little bit of change here. Everyone familiar with RightFax, uh, the previous versions, you would have to have the EDC module loaded to configure MFPs. It was a little um, complex. It was uh, very resource hungry and uh, just a, a little bit more work adding and deleting and, and administering MFPs. Now with the web admin, you can do it directly from just firing up the web admin, clicking on your um, add MFP and put in the IP address and you can push it out right to one or even multiple MFPs with a single click. Okay, we're gonna start the demo now and I'm gonna uh, bring up our demo system. Okay, so let's start the demo with the new and improved RightFax web client or Faxutil web edition. As you can see, it is integrated with AD, so it's single sign-on. There is my login in the upper right, my name, so it knows who I am. Um, pretty nice interface to view a fax. As always, you just double-click, so we'll show viewing a fax. Pretty straightforward. It comes up in its built-in viewer. And you have the ability to rotate, zoom in, zoom out. You know, some of these features, if not all of them, were available in previous versions. I just wanted to go through them real quick. We also do have the ability to annotate. So if I zoom in a little bit here, I can annotate a fax. And what's really nice is, let's say if I had a rubber stamp, so I'll do the uh, John Doe 
signature stamp. What's nice is once this is on here, I have the ability to save it and then go back to the original version. So there is some basic versioning built into the web client. So let's close this and save. And let's go through some of the things that I know are brand new with 20.2. So first of all, if I go to a fax that has a bunch of pages, we now have a preview on the right. So there it is. So let's look at a fax that's multiple pages here. We'll go over to the right. Let's take a 15-page fax, I see. And you will see that now I can preview all the pages on the right without even going into it. That's brand new with this version. And there it is. So that's the previews on the right. Other new features in the web is the experience sending. So if I go to new fax, you will see a totally rewritten interface. The interface now is it's full featured and um, a little quicker. So you can see you start off with the destination, which would be the fax number. So two fax destination, I could put in a fax number. Once you put in a fax number, it automatically goes out to the right fax phone book and tries to match anyone with that fax number. So I can choose my name. When I do that, if I open up the drop down, you will see all the fields are filled in. So it has my name, my voice number, my company. These fields are the billing code. So that we defined it in this case as customer and patient name. So this was stored with the, um, the phone book entry. So I can put Very nice. You also have the ability, obviously, to add your attachments, either a library document or file. All your additional options are to the right, so your cover sheet drop down with a preview. So you always can view your cover sheet before you choose it. Your comments, your from, all this information was pulled in from Active Directory. Some conversion options here, so you can use different conversion biases. To, find, uh, to create a PDF, you use an overlay, pull for preview, and change of priority, and other options for sending. Once you have all your information, you hit send. And if you refresh your view, you will see a fax being created and ready to go. OK, another new feature directly from the right fax utility web edition is the ability now to do your delegate. So it used to have to be done directly from only fax utility, you need the thick client. So now with the web client, you can also define delegates. So I can define what user or group will have delegate rights to my fax box. Some other things you have under your options here, you have um, some additional options. So if I look at the options here, here's where we define our all the defaults for sending, receiving, notification. So really the bottom line is the Fax Utility Web Edition, it has full feature parity to the Thick Client. And I really don't see any reason why a customer would install the Thick Client anymore when you can do the Web Client. One of the big advantages now is when we upgrade WriteFax, the Web Client upgrades with it. And of course, there is no install needed on your clients. OK, the next thing I'd like to show is the new fax printer. So what I could do is go up to, uh, let's see, Microsoft Excel, I guess. That would be great. Go into Microsoft Excel. I will start a new workbook. I will go File, Print. Make sure I choose the right fax printer. Click Print, and you will see a, a new fax dialog box pops up. It, it looks a little bit like it was based on the web edition. Very similar. You put in your fax number, just like before. It matches any phone book entries that have that number in it. You add your message. You have the ability to view your cover sheet directly, change your cover sheet. Basically, all the things you could do from the web edition and the thick client you could do from the printer. Hit send, then it's off. OK, let's go back to the Internet Explorer here, or the Chrome, and let me show you the Web Admin. So what I'm going to do is, from the drop-down here, I'm going to choose to go to the Web Admin. And the 
big change in the weapon min that I mentioned earlier now is your MFPs are all configured and administered directly from the weapon min. Very easy. You can either do one at a time by doing new, putting in the IP address of the MFP you want to push the update out to. You can put a description and network address, push it out. Or if you have a file, a CSV file with all the IP addresses, you could do an import. We also have some global settings that define the settings for all your MFPs here. So when you click your global MFP settings, your options come up for that. Okay, the next thing I'd like to show you is the client connections. So you can click on client connections and see all your users that are connected and what they're connected to between RightFax clients and RightFax server utilities. So it's pretty nice if you have to reboot do maintenance, you know who's on your system, you can take a look and contact them to tell them to please log out or disconnect. After that, let's take a look at the new external connections. So I mentioned earlier that we can have multiple email gateways. And here's where we set up that the email gateways right over here. So you go here and you put in a name and then the type. And this is brand new, so we can do FTP, we can do SMTP, POP, so we set up our external connections here. Now, the new one is FTP, so now what you can do is, in all versions of RightFax up to now, we can always deliver to SMTP, we can deliver to Exchange, we can deliver to a network folder, so now we can even deliver to FTP. So what we, what we would do is set up our FTP here, set up our FTP connection. Once we have it defined here in our external connections, we can go to our users, we can go into their route code, I'm sorry, their route type. Let's do it. And you'll see if I go to route type, routing type here, I can go to the very bottom and choose FTP. If I choose FTP, what will happen is when a fax comes in for this user, it'll deliver it to the FTP server with the credentials defined through my external connections. We also talked about the multiple gateways and assigning it to groups. So if we go into groups, we will see how we define different groups to different gateways. So I'm going to go and choose a group from my list. I'll go and choose everyone. And once I'm in group everyone, we will see the new field for defining our external gateway. So down here preferred email gateway, so I can choose from the drop-down. So I might have an exchange, SMTP, I can have a second SMTP. So I can have different groups use different SMTP servers, maybe spread the load around to different servers based on the group. And then I can define different groups to different time of days, so I can have different groups attached to different gateways during different times of day. Okay, let's close out the web admin. And I did want to show you some new security features. So if I open up Fax Utility and I go File, Open Server, you'll see that the protocol now is automatic and the default is now Secure TCP. So now all connections between RightFax and any clients, so either through the Fax Util, the THIC EFM, Enterprise Fax Manager, is all going to be automatic, which will also be Secure TCP IP. Another thing is the administrator now, out of the box, has a default password, a password, no more blank passwords. And you probably saw it with the web. The web interface now is defaulting to HTTPS with a self-signed certificate. Okay, the last thing I'd like to show you during this demo is some of the new changes in some of the right fax services. Really, the big change is within the server module. So there's a couple of new new features here that come up. You will see one of the things is a uh, fax utility timeout. Uh, this might have been added in the previous version, but I wanted to point that out. What is brand new in this version is high resolution faxing. So I'll talk about that a bit. If you enable high resolution faxing, it doubles the resolution of a fax. The problem is it also doubles the size of the fax. So we only recommend using high resolution if there's a, a, a business purpose for it. 
because not only is it going to be larger the file but remember your transmission will be at least twice as long right now an average fax could be 30 to seconds to a minute now you're looking at two minutes or more but that is a new feature and if you'd like to enable it you can it has to be available on both the sending and receiving fax machine so you have to make sure that who you're sending to also has the ability to receive high resolution faxes or they'll drop it down to standard resolution we do also have some new messages here so if you receive a fax with too few DIDs, so let's say you're set up your right fax system for seven digit routing and you receive a fax with only four digits, you can get an admin alert, which is important because it means that your telecom is not set up properly and they were passing too few digits, so you want to know right away. So that's a really nice feature. So you don't have to worry about losing all your faxes or having them get sent to the administrator because they're not matching a user. You'll be notified and you can hopefully fix it right away. Okay, the next thing I'd like to show you is the RightFax email gateway module changes. And the biggest change there will be the new time of day tab. So based on the time of day, you can enable or disable a gateway. Also, if we go under the individual gateway, like the SMTP POP3, you will notice also the time of day here. And we also have a little bit different under the um, SMTP and POP3, we have the ability to create a new connection right there. This will just take you to the external connections. And that's really uh, the major changes. I'm not going to go through all the modules. Most of them, the very few changes, if there are at all. And then, uh, that's it for the first part of the demo. I am going to demo the workflows in a few minutes. And I'm going to go through how that works and how to configure it. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about fax workflows. We're going to go through what's new with fax workflows in WriteFax 20.2. Um, workflows were introduced actually in WriteFax 16.6, .6, and they were greatly enhanced with 20.2 to make it much more usable. So we're going to go through a few slides, and then we're going to do a brief demo on a basic fax workflow that would be used in a, the healthcare sector. So first of all, some enhancements. Um, we have increased document security with enhanced visibility into user roles and actions. There's now a built-in exception handling to allow faxes to be held for special treatment. So this would be faxes that had an exception, maybe a problem or, or something that is not part of the standard workflow. You can have it go through an exception workflow. And now you can actually create and manage workflows using a very easy workflow configurator. Some additional enhancements is um, a new check-in, check-out system with an availability column. So now people that are sharing a workflow know who's working on the fax at that moment and if it's available or not available. And the faxes are, are fully indexed to provide a more accurate search and filter experience. And now the fax history in XML provides branching, exception handling, rejections, SLAs, and metadata viewing. Okay, we're going to start the demo of the fax workflow. As you can see, I fired up the right fax fax utility so I can show you a real use case of the fax workflows. Remember, right fax has always been an important tool for document centric workflows. The powerful routing engine in right fax ensures that the correct document gets to the right place as quickly as possible. Now we can capture important information along the way adding even more value to the document. To illustrate the power of the new workflow engine, we are going to walk through a quick three-step process taken from the healthcare world. It's going to be a claims processing workflow for durable medical equipment, also known as DME. Okay, so first a claim clerk will capture important information from the fax, then pass it off to a nurse to review and approve the data. Then finally, upon approval, the claim and all the collected data will automatically be exported to a folder so it can be imported into a separate back office application for final processing. So as a claims clerk, part of my job is to process new DME claim faxes in the order they receive. So the first thing I'm going to do is expand my workflows. And I'm doing it under the claims clerk fax box. And as you can see, 
there is multiple workflows here. The one I'm gonna be interested for the demo is claims DME. When I click claim DME, the first thing you'll notice is uh, some new fields along the top. We have an availability field that defines if anyone is currently in the workflow. So workflows are not assigned to individuals, they're assigned to users or groups. So you have multiple people assigned to a workflow and whoever goes into it, by clicking on it, the availability will change from green to red to let other people know you are in it. And to the right, we have all our workflow metadata fields. I can open up a little bit and you can see how they're defined. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, is actually show you a fax coming in from the outside world. It's gonna get assigned to the claims DME workflow. To do that, I'm just gonna to go to the administrator and I'm gonna create a fax. So I click new fax, and in this case, I'm gonna put in the four digit route code assigned to the claims DME workflow, which is 4002. Now remember, I'm demoing it, so I'm actually sending it from right fax into a workflow. In the real world, this would be coming from an outside hospital, insurance company, medical group, where they would be using either a fax server or a fax machine, and they would give the full 10 digits, such as like 212-710-4002. That would come in from the outside world, right fax would answer, and it would route that fax to the claims DME workflow. So for the name, I'll put claims. DME, and I'm gonna throw in a, a form here. This will be a, an example of a DME form. And I'm gonna hit send. Okay, we're gonna have right facts process this. It'll, it'll be pretty quick because it's all internal. Okay, sending. Okay, so the fax is complete. And now if we click on a claims DME, we see a new fax has arrived. So let's go into the newest one here. We're gonna click on it. And as you can see, there are some new metadata fields to the right. Now based on the fax, I'm gonna look at the claims form. Let me zoom out a little bit. Perfect. And we are gonna enter the information from the fax. So the patient name we'll put in is John Doe. The patient ID, which is in the upper right, is 91234567AB5001. The provider name is Dr. Robert Brown. The provider NPI is right here, which will be 123. 987-4560, and the prior authorization number, which is down here, is 987-654-32101. So I have entered all my metadata. Some fields are required. In this case, patient name, patient ID, and provider MPI are required fields. So when I created this workflow, I defined those as required. The provider name and prior authorization number are optional fields. So that means that if I didn't enter the provider name or the prior authorization, I can still complete the workflow. But I need to at least put a patient name, patient ID, and a provider NPI. So at this point, I'm gonna click Complete Workflow. I can add some comments if I want, and I'm gonna save it. Once I save it, as you can see, it is no longer in my fax box or my fax workflow, it moved to the nurse's fax workflow. So if I go to the fax box to nurse one, and I go to claims approval, I will see a new workflow fax has arrived. So if I click on this now, I will see the same fax, and I can go and look at the metadata that was previously entered, and I could confirm it looks good. So as the nurse, my job is to authorize and, and confirm that the metadata was entered properly and matches, basically I'm a verifier. So I'll look down and say, looks good, everything matches. So then I'll go to my metadata here and I'll initial it as the, author as the authorization. The date, and I can define if I want to approve it 
or deny it. I will approve it. And I have the ability to add some notes here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is hit complete workflow. Again, I have my comments. I will then save it. It is now removed from my fax box and now is moved to the claims archive. So if I click claims archive here, we will see at 138, here it is. And this is the, the fax, the original fax. Now, this is not a workflow. This is the final resting place for the fax. So it has two purposes. One is for archival purposes. You can always go and look at the facts. And number two, we have this user set up to deliver the facts to a network folder with the metadata. So if I go onto my file system here, under XML gen, we will see three new files showed up. So the first file is the facts itself. The next file is the generic XML metadata, just that goes with the facts, like the date and time it came in, the owner of the facts, maybe the remote ID, and all the information that is passed on the inbound facts. And finally, our workflow metadata, which will be the two workflows that this fax went through, the, the approval and first the DME, so it works its way up. So first it hit the claims DME, it has the patient ID, the patient name, the prior authorization number, the provider name, and the provider MPI, and then the approval. So it was approved. Who approved it? JK and the date. No notes in this case. There is a configuration, so you know we can combine the XML metadata from the generic facts and the workflow. So that was just a basic example of a workflow. If you want any more information on RightFacts workflows, We'll be having an expanded webinar in the next few weeks, or you can reach out to your account manager for a customized demo. Next thing I'd like to talk about is what's new with the integrations with RightFacts 20.2. So for healthcare customers that use Epic, the integration with RightFacts is now done using the Epic API. This makes the integration much easier to configure and you no longer need to configure RightFax FCL files and notification channels. The RightFax integration module will still be required, but for licensing purposes only. Okay, there are some new security and compliance features of RightFax 20.2. Let's take a look at them. So when installing RightFax, security will be enabled out of the box. This means all client server connections will use secure TCP instead of TCP. I know I showed you guys that earlier during the demo. And all web modules will have HTTPS enabled with a self-signed certificate. All the security settings can be adjusted directly from the web admin. Okay, Advantage Technologies now has a suite of add-ons that will make your RightFact server more powerful and more functional. The next few slides will go through all the add-ons. The Advantage Mail to Fax Connector will allow users to fax directly from any email client using a simple addressing format. The Mail to Fax Connector will also fax enable your MFP fleet using the scan to email function. Using this add-on will enable you to remove costly analog lines, reduce license costs, and simplify faxing from both MFPs and your email clients. The Advantage Developer API support includes a one-year subscription to the OpenText Developer Edition server and up to eight hours of support with a certified Advantage developer. The support can be used for installation, configuration, and code support. Our FaxPulse Automated Inbound, also known as FaxPulse AI, is a great tool to verify your inbound faxing is working correctly. FaxPulse AI will track an inbound fax from the time your server receives a call all the way to the various workflows, such as a network folder, email, or even delivery into an application. FaxPulse AI will also send you an email if there is a phone line problem. FaxPulse Business Intelligence is an analytics and monitoring add-on for RightFax. FaxPulse BI can be used to isolate issues with your RightFax server. Issues can include transmission errors, 
conversion errors, or unavailable resources. Fax Pulse BI can also be used to maximize the usage of your right fax channels based on the time of day, individual or group usage, day, week, or month, or year usage. It also includes a full-featured monitoring tool that will notify you if one of your right fax services are not running or if your queues are building higher than a set threshold. Since it is such a powerful and full-featured add-on, I would recommend you contact your sales associate for a demo of the product. Okay, so now let's talk about planning for the upgrade. As you can see from the slide, RightFax 20.2 now fully supports Windows Server 2019 and no longer supports Windows Server 2008. RightFax 20.2 also fully supports Outlook 2019. The system requirements for RightFax can be downloaded from the Advantage Technologies website. So now let me walk you through a typical Advantage Upgrade PS project. So first we have our project planning. So we need to document the integrations, talk about the design improvements, and develop a solid project plan. We're gonna do a fresh install of the new version. We're gonna configure it to match your previous version. We will then migrate all your existing users, faxes, and configurations. After thorough testing, so we will test all fax integrations, make sure there are no issues, make sure the telecom is working, make sure the web is working, make sure all the client connections look good. Once the client approves, we're going to schedule a cutover. So during the cutover is when we have outages. So during the cutover is when we actually take telecom and migrate it to the new system. If there is any thick clients installed is when we upgrade the clients. And if there are any applications that are pointing to right facts, such as Epic, OnBase, or anything else, that is when we point it to the new system. The good news is if there are any issues, and they usually are not, but if there are, we have a simple rollback path because the primary or previous system is still in place and working. We just got to roll back the telecom, repoint applications back to the old system. Pretty straightforward, and um, usually we have no issues at all, and the upgrade goes really smooth. Most downtime is less than 15 minutes because what we're doing is cutting over telecom, maybe pointing fax numbers from a, one SIP trunk to another, maybe just unplugging a T1 and moving it into a new gateway, or maybe just re-IPing the new right fax server to take the IP address of the old one so everything just points to it and everything works.